Uh, good afternoon. My name is Brandon Baxter. Um, I'm here today to show you the correct procedure as taught by the UA to make a solder and braze joint. Um, first thing we're going to do today, we're going to set up our torch. Is, um, we're going to attach the regulator to the, uh, the acetylene bottle. Mike told you earlier these are brass fittings and you do not want to put your channel locks on these. You want to make sure that you're either using the correct size wrench or an adjustable wrench. This regulator on here is snug it up. We're making a three quarter inch solder joint today. So we're gonna wanna be sure to select the appropriate size torch tip. And since this is a small joint and it's a solder joint that is only going to require a small tip so as not to overheat the joint that we're making today. As Mike mentioned earlier that we have the cup striker. We will not use a lighter on this. You want to think about safety each time and uh, have the cup striker. Here on this striker, you, um, you have detachable flints on these. These can be replaced. Unscrew this off by hand. Attach a new one on here. And you will usually have packages with additional flints on the job site for when the striker is not operable. As we're making this solder joint, first thing you want to do is you want, you want to keep your torch head moving. You don't want it to stay continuously in the same place. You're going to want to move your heat around the pipe and the coupling. First thing you want to do is preheat the pipe before you move your heat over to your coupling. Want to open up your B tank. Now there's no particular hand you should hold your torch or solder with. It's whatever feels the most comfortable to you. This is your on and off switch for your acetylene gas. You want to Strike this first to be sure that the regulator is set the proper heat. If you have this regulator turned down too low, you will overheat your tip and cause it to get too hot and damage your tip. As I said before, you want to start your heat on the pipe and move it to the fitting never directing your heat on the face of this cup. You want to start your solder on the bottom part of the cup, work your way up one side, go back to the bottom, work your way up the next side, and then across the top. That creates a dam in that cup so that you're able to get it with complete penetration with the solder. That solder joint's now made. You want to gently wipe that joint to clean off the excess solder. You don't want to put too much force in it because you don't want to break that seal that that solder's created on there. 
after giving the joint time to cool, then you want to take a rag and clean the joint, clean off that excess flux that possibly stayed on that joint so that your uh, pipe, I know that you've seen copper pipe before where it turn, turns the green color, that's oxidization. That comes from leaving your flux on there after making it. So if you just clean that up after it cools off, that's it. You've made a three quarter inch uh, copper solder joint.